Hi guys, I am Arielle with Arielle Paints. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to start a new series. It's going to be a Q&A series. This particular video is going to be about how I started as a face painter, my background, so more about me. But you guys have so many questions about difficult situations, about contracts for face painting, about designs, all sorts of stuff. And if you are a follower on my Instagram, or my Facebook, you would have seen I posted to ask you guys what other questions you have, and I got so many responses. So it'll be the start of a series. I'm going to try to group it together so that if you have a particular interest, you can kind of pick and choose what videos you want to watch. This one is going to be the most common questions that I get all the time about how I started, why I'm a face painter, if I face paint full time, I get that one all the time. So stay tuned and I am going to go through all of those questions. If you hear like a little hum in the background, I'm sorry. My studio is in the basement of my house and I'm really close to the water heater and it's cold here. So I think it's like humming. I can hear it. I'm not sure if the camera and my mic are going to pick it up, but if it does, I apologize. So stay tuned and let's get into the questions. Okay, so the first question is, how long have you been face painting? I have been face painting for at least eight years um, professionally. Prior to that, I did volunteer at some events at the Art Center. Me and my friends volunteered to paint um, people's arms and faces for kind of like a fun uh, evening out event. So I started doing a little bit maybe like 10 years ago, but I would say about six years ago is when I really, really got into face painting. I was asked to volunteer at a local event. Um, I had a friend running an organization here. It's kind of a cool historic house called the Salisbury House in the Midwest, and it's an amazing castle. And she needed a volunteer to face paint. So me and my friends said, sure, we'll do it. And that was six years ago. And I still do that event. In the beginning, it was like eight of my friends. We all came with palettes and um, we used acrylic paint because we did not know better. Do not do that. Now that I know not to do that, I'm mortified that we did it, but we didn't know. We showed up and um, and did the event and it was so much fun. And then the next year she asked us to come back and those eight friends turned into about three friends. And then the following year, it was just me. Um, how it evolved is during those events, people were saying to me, oh, how much do you charge for a birthday party? Can you come to this event? Uh, where, what's your contact information? I want to hire you. And it just organically happened. Um, once people started to ask to hire me, I started to look into face painting and I realized that there was face paint and I started ordering split cakes and real face paint. I realized that using acrylic paint was kind of dangerous and I stopped using it. So um, I've heard a lot of painters started that way and I still get people that come up to me. I was at an event last week and someone said, oh, I face paint and I use acrylic paint. And I was like, oh, okay, you should probably stop doing that. But when you don't know, you don't know. So that's really how it started. I um, credit my friend for asking me to come help and figuring out that it was something that I loved to do. Okay, so another question I get all the time is, do you have an art degree? No, I don't have an art degree, actually. I have a degree in broadcasting and marketing. I did, however, start working at an art company when I was 16 years old. I was in high school, and I really was into art. I knew I liked art, and I had an opportunity to start working for a local art company that made object art and furniture. And it was a company where we hand-painted, wood-burnt, and designed different pieces to sell. So I started doing that when I was 16 years old, and I stayed at that company for 17 years. Yes, when I I say it out loud I even have to like stop for a second and think 17 years but yeah it was a really long time 12 of those years at that art company I was actually physically painting every day eight hours a day and I still believe that that prepared me for a future that I didn't know I was going to have 
Um, when you sit and you paint for that long, and I've, I haven't even calculated the hours that I've sat there and painted, um, but you really train yourself to be a fast painter. You get that muscle memory. I'm able to have a really, really steady hand because I did that for so long. I also joke with my friends who know me and my friends that still work at that art company that it really was an art education. I started there very young. I was very lucky to have these um, older women and men who did have master's degrees in art, who had a lot of art training, art theory, different tips and tricks, and they really trained me to be an artist. They taught me how to mix colors, how to layer paint, um, the idea of value and contrast. So in a way, I really credit that company and those friends that I made there that I'm still friends with that taught me to be a better artist. Um, as I was working for that company, I realized at a certain point that I, I wanted an education and I wanted more. So I did go to school and that's when I decided to go into broadcasting and marketing. And that also leads me to the question of that I get a lot, why did you start a YouTube channel? So my love of uh, creating videos and editing was a really natural transition for me then to start a YouTube channel. When I started face painting, I searched and searched for different videos to teach me what this art was all about. And I found some really, really good ones. Um, some of which you guys probably watch if you're watching me. Uh, Lisa Joy Young was one that I watched a lot of. Um, oh, who's the other one? I have to find it. Hold on. Sophie's Tips. That's what it was. Sophie's Tips. Love her. She was a, a great channel. If you haven't watched her, check it out. And then there were some other little ones that I watched, but I also noticed during that time when I was trying to teach myself that the videos I was really looking for weren't out there. So I had to make up a lot. I had to make up the business side. I had to create designs that were more applicable for the job. There were a lot of channels and still are a lot of channels that do really elaborate, um, gorgeous designs. But I quickly, quickly realized of what I knew of working on the job and what I know of art that they weren't very practical for a birthday party or for a festival. I also started doing paid per face at festivals. That's how I got started. I had no birthday gigs, no private events. It was all paid per face. So when you're at a festival and you are getting paid per the face that you do, the five $3 faces, $10 sometimes, you have to be really quick. Those designs have to be incredibly impactful and they have to get their money out of what they're paying, right? So I realized that I needed to come up with designs that were really, really quick to apply to the face, but then when the customer walked away and those parents are with their kids, they're thinking they got all of their money worth for that $3, $5 design, whatever it may be. That's when I realized too that I could probably help people. So my channel is designed as practical face painted designs. Every now and then I'll do something a little bit more elaborate, but really the focus of this channel is to show you guys actual applicable designs that you can do at a birthday party or a festival that are quick and impactful. So long story short, during that time at the art company, um, I went back to school and I got a broadcasting and marketing degree. I fell in love with radio. I really liked production and editing. And then later on, when I had the face painting thing kind of figured out, my business was growing, I decided I can help people. I can make those videos that I couldn't find when I started to face paint. So that's how I started my channel. So I answered this question a little bit about how did you start face painting, and it really was that volunteer gig that drove me, but beyond that, once I realized people wanted to hire me and they wanted me to come to their birthday party, I, of course, started to get supplies. I started to gather the correct supplies and I started to practice with those because face paint is a very, very different medium, which I've, I've mentioned in other videos. 
you can be a wonderful artist and have all the skill in the world, color theory, design, you can draw, but you might not be able to face paint because you have to train yourself to do it. So I practiced. I practiced on my daughter all the time and I made horrible designs. My first face painting designs were not good. I remember doing this white butterfly because I thought, oh, I love white, you know? And as you guys know, white is not the best background for stuff like that. But I didn't know. I just experimented, I practiced, and then I slowly started going to gigs and doing things on the job. So it took a while for me to get good. Um, I would say it took a year, two years for me to come away from an event and think, wow, I've got it. I figured it out. So I really got started slowly. I kind of fell into it and then started to kind of build on it and then really fell in love with it. Um, another question that I have on my list is, uh, what you love about face painting. So what I love about it is that I get like the best moment with people's kids. Um, I love kids. I have a kid who you guys, a little daughter who you've probably seen on some of my videos. Um, but I've never been that person who's like baby crazy. I've never wanted to work in a daycare, you know, that kind of stuff. However, I get so much joy out of making kids happy. I realized that, and I still think it's almost like a selfish thing, you know? I wish I could say it's all about the kids and it's all for them, but it's selfish. I get this like ping of joy when I hold a mirror up in front of a little kid's face or I take them over to my mirror and their eyes light up and they're a princess or a butterfly and they're amazed by it. I love the older kids who stand and watch me the whole event and ask me questions and they want to be an artist. I get a lot of personal joy out of it and I think that's what really drives me. Um, I, there was an event this summer that I did and it was just a wonderful community event and there were so many kids and everyone was so excited and so happy. And I left that event feeling revived, like it feeds my soul. So that is absolutely my favorite part of face painting, um, is that magic, that magical moment of transforming a young child into something that brings them just this fantastic joy. So that's what really drives me as a face painter. This is probably the number one question I get asked and I get messages about it all the time. Do you face paint full time? Can I face paint full time? Okay, so this will be a two part uh, answer to this question. I do not face paint full time. I chose not to be and choose not to be a full time face painter and I will tell you why. I worked at that art company for so long and I was a working artist and I feel very lucky to have worked as an artist for so long. There's not a lot of art companies out there, especially that you could paint all day and and then say, you know, um, that you're a full time artist. So I did that for so long and during that time when I decided to go back to school, the driving force there was that I wasn't having fun anymore. I, you know, painted all day long and then I went home and I never wanted to paint on the weekends. I didn't want to paint at night because I was doing it all day and I was doing it for someone else. And I started to not like art anymore. So during that time and when I went back to school and got um, into the communication department and broadcasting and video production and all that stuff, I realized that for me, doing what you love as a job turned it into a job for me. And it took the fun out of it. And I realized that I never wanted to do that again. So when I graduated, I went into... Uh, sales. I still worked for the art company for a while. I went more on the business side. I ran our galleries and um, did uh, other internal business um, 
jobs at the company and then later left that company. And when I stopped painting all day long, that's when I started to fall in love with art again. I became an abstract artist, which I had always wanted to figure out how to abstract paint, which is really, really hard if you guys um, haven't tried that. So that's when I really uh, discovered art again and what I love about art. And even though I had have fallen in love with face painting, I still feel the same way. I feel like if face painting turned into a job that I had to make a certain amount of money to pay the bills or I had to have this many gigs a month, then it's going to take the joy and the fun away a little bit and that's not what I want. Um, so the other part of that question that I get asked all the time is, can I be a full-time face painter? I get messages about this constantly on Facebook. Do you face paint full-time? Can I face paint full-time? Yes, you can. Do I think it would be really easy and that you're going to make a ton of money? Probably not. I think it's going to be hard, but it's not impossible. You just have to do some planning, and I think it depends on how much money you need to survive. Um, I'm in the Midwest in the States, and our winters are really cold. There's no festivals in the winter, so I wouldn't have that to supplement my income. I think if you're in an area where you have enough business and you have a good standing and can promote yourself and you can get enough gigs, then yes, be a full-time face painter. There are a lot of full-time face painters. I am not a full-time face painter. I choose not to be, and I don't regret that. I feel really good about it. Whether someday I will choose to just face paint full-time, I'm not sure. I haven't decided yet, but it's very, very possible. Um, as far as what I do full-time, I work for a technology company, and I work with school districts and the technology they put into school districts. I love it. It's great. It suits me. Um, and I really, really, truly enjoy it. So I don't feel like I'm missing anything. And then in, you know, the summertime, I get to do more events because I'm quieter for that full time job, as well as all my events are really focused on the weekends. So I could have any full-time job and still be a face painter on the weekends and still do things like this YouTube channel and help teach people um, the, the art of face painting and still make primarily my income from a job that is not face painting. So, so it really works for me. I'm really happy and I feel really good about it. But, um, you know, I don't want to discourage anyone as well. I know there's a lot of full-time face painters out there that are making good money. And who's to say that you as a face painter shouldn't make a decent good salary? You can. But I think it's going to take a lot of practice um, and a lot of planning as well to make sure that you are supplementing your income uh, enough so that you can sustain yourself. Okay, so other questions I got were, um, what other things do I love uh, besides face painting? I love makeup. I love lipstick. I love highlighter. I just love makeup. I love the art of makeup. I'm obsessed with makeup YouTube channels. So <laughs> I love that. Um, I also love color. You can see my uh, bright purple top. Um, when I was at the, the art company, I was in charge of mixing all of our pre-mixed paints that we used that we painted the different object art and furniture with, and I fell in love with color. I fell in love with color theory. I love dark colors, bright colors. I love trying to figure out what the makeup of a color is, you know, how to mix a color. So I would say that I am color obsessed. Um... So that's something I love. What else do I love? I love music. I am obsessed with music. Right now I'm obsessed with Lady Gaga, um, which I've listened to her before, but I just get into stuff and then I like, you know, obsess over it. So obsessed with her right now. Um, what other facts about me can I tell you guys? Let's see. I have an older brother. I have a cat named Emmy Lou Harris. Music. Um, what else? 
I'm vegan. I've been vegan for a little bit over a year now, and I have been a vegetarian on and off my whole life. I've never been a huge meat eater, but I'd always wanted to try to be vegan, and I had failed at it many times, and this time it finally stuck. So I am a vegan. Um, what else? Oh, I also got asked um, what other art I do, and I mentioned briefly that um, more recently, abstract painting was something that I really, really got into. I really loved the kind of chaos of it. It's like organized chaos, and I find it very, very interesting. Um, one of my favorite artists is Gayhard Richter, who started as a uh, realistic painter, um, and then turned into an abstract painter. And I feel like, you know, his whole body of work is really, really interesting because um, to be an abstract painter, you have to know how to paint and then kind of go the opposite way. And I just find that fascinating, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to be an abstract painter. So he is probably one of my favorite artists. Um, besides that, I love unicorns, I love sparkles, I love all things uh, <laughs> glittery and fun, and I try really hard to be an internal optimist. Um, I got a lot of questions about how to stay positive and how to work through issues and that kind of stuff, and like I said, I'm going to do some more videos to kind of group, group some of those other questions together, but... Um, I do think that in life it's really important to try to be positive, to lift yourself up by the bootstraps and do the absolute best you can. Um, I am a firm believer in karma and what you put out in the universe is what you get back. So if you are negative and you are you know, constantly beating yourself up, I think that is going to beat you up in real life. So I do think it's really important to stay positive and do your best to reflect out into the world what you want back. Um, I think that's also one of the reasons why I wanted to start a YouTube channel is because I wanted to give back to a community that I felt like gave a lot to me and inspires me. And if I can contribute just a little bit of help and positivity out into that community, then I'm doing my part. So um, I hope that helps answer some questions you guys have. Like I said, I'm going to do more of a series. So this is just going to be the first part of a Q&A series. If you guys have more questions about this video or anything I said or topics you want me to cover down the road, please comment below and let me know. Um, one topic I am going to cover is the business side of face painting, specifically why I'm an LLC, which I get asked a lot, and contracts, which you guys have been asking me about contracts for so long. So that's going to be the next part of this series, so stay tuned for that. But if there are any trending questions I see, I'm going to start grouping them together and do little Q&A videos like this. So don't stop asking me questions. You can private message me on Facebook, ask me questions on Instagram, or comment down below. So thank you all for watching. Thank you for subscribing to my channel and being a part of my face painting world. I appreciate you guys so, so, so very much, and I will see you in my next video. Please stop making that noise. Water heater. Goes down and the band won't play. I'll always remember us this way. So you guys want to see my Lady Gaga hat? I'm calling this my Lady Gaga hat. I just got it. Told you I was obsessed with her, right? How cute is it? I love it. And this color. Oh, I love these saturated colors. Obsessed. Thanks for watching.